Inhale, take those arms up. Big stretch. Keep your abs tight and reach those arms up. And then release your arms down. Good. Big stretch up. And release it down. Draw your chin to your chest and roll down. And then just swing your arms from right to left like you're playing with your hands in the sand. Nice and steady. Good. Bring it back to center and roll yourself up one bone at a time. Roll those shoulders up, back, and around. Breathing into it. And then reverse the shoulders all the way around. Good, and now we're just gonna swing, warming up that body, getting that rotation. Beautiful. And last one, five calf raises, up and down. Four, three, two, let's get this workout started. You're right in front of whatever object you're sitting down on. Sit down, tap that chair, and come back up. Two, breathe. Good, keeping your abs nice and tight. If you can't get down to your chair, go as far down as you can, but, the exciting thing is, is, let's say you're like, oh my god, no, I didn't make it. You're sitting down, so it's no big deal. So get that bottom to touch back and down, and then stand back up. Deep breath. Good job, you guys. So this couch potato workout, hopefully you knew me well enough to know that this is going to be a workout. And then, after we're done, you can just plop down on your seat or your chair, and you can take it easy. Good. Keep working through it. Again. If you need to take breaks between, you can. If you can't go full range, that's okay. And if you need to take rest between, if you need to drop down, hold, and then power up, that's okay as well. Hold down and power up. Otherwise, you're just tapping and going. All right, so from here, you can give me little pulses. So you're gonna hover right above the chair or the couch, and you're gonna tap and come back up. So I'm gonna do it from a side view. I'm gonna be right here, I'm just gonna tap, and come back up and stay really low, keeping that position. Deep breath as you work. Quads are burning. Keep your abs tight. Make sure your belly button is coming into your spine, protecting that low back as you work. Also, your knees. Watch they don't start to fall together. Keep your outer glutes active. Good. If you want to make this harder, you can always quickly throw on a TheraBand around those thighs. It'll give you some stimulation and activation through those legs. I think some of you are running and grabbing a TheraBand real fast. Breathe. Good job. I know, don't come up too high. Just tap and go. Remember, it's always there if you need a break. That timer's coming. Good job, keep it going. Breathe into it. Whoo-wee. Again, if you need to take a seat, whoo, take a seat. Don't do it yet if you don't have to. Breathe. Tapping down and stand on up. Breathe. Shake out those legs. Good, you have a moment. Next exercise is to turn your toes out. We're going into what's called second position or sumo squat. So with those knees over our ankles, drop straight down, tap down, and bring it back up. You may have to find that you get closer because on this one, your body stays really upright as you drop down. So you might find that your feet are really just wrapped around the chair. Or if you're at the sofa, your heels are pretty close to the, the base portion of the sofa. Beautiful. Feels good to go full range, right? But you know me well enough, so you know pulses are coming. Three. Hopefully you didn't just tune in and tune back out. You got this, you guys, you got this. Three. Nice and steady. Now, if you have knee pain in this, changing your angle with your feet, making your toes go a little bit more parallel tracking. Also make sure the weight is on your heels as you rock back. And also, don't go to a pain point. Go with a pain-free range. You kind of find a lot of pulling your quads attaching into your knees. That's patellofemoral syndrome. We want to roll up those quads when we're done. All right, here we go, you guys. Next set is going to be pulses. We're going to have some fun with these pulses. We're going to lift our right heel up, and we're going to pulse down, tapping our butt to that chair. The right heel is staying up. Now, again, if this is too much hip mobility, you can be here, and you can just parallel leg it, little wider stance with the heel up and work through it there, okay? So your choice on what's appropriate for your hip range, and your leg and your hip socket. Good, switch legs. Breathe. Keeping those abs tight, not coming up too high, tapping down and coming back up. Beautiful. Switching legs. Breathe. 
Good work. Don't put your hands weighing on your thighs. You can put them on your hips if you need them. And switch legs. Timer's almost there. Breathing into it. Keeping those abs nice and tight as you work. Good job. You got this. And release it out and breathe. Shake out those legs. Pat out those legs. Okay. So from there, next exercise, you're going to put one foot with a straight leg onto your chair, or onto your bench, or whatever you're using. And then we're going to go for squat straight down on that side lunge. Let that leg that's on the chair stay relaxed. And then drop straight back and up. Feel the stretch in your inner groin on that right leg or left leg, depending on which side you're starting with. And breathe as you press back. Again, pain-free bend in the knees. This is a lot of hip mobility. So you might have to bend that knee on the couch as you work. Or you may have to do it without the foot being elevated and stay right here. And that's okay as well. Just working your range that you feel comfortable with while challenging yourself. Good. Breathe as you drop it back and down. Keeping those abs tight. Notice I'm going into a flat back. I'm not going so far forward, but I'm letting it follow my shin angle. Breathe to send those hips back. Deep breath. Good news, no pulses on this one. Breathe. Good. Squeeze the glutes, last one, and release. Good. Switching to the other side. Again, however you did it on one side, do it on the other side. Even if one side has an injury and one side doesn't, kind of balance it out. So one foot's on the chair and draw it straight down, or that foot is on the floor. Okay, now how to put that foot on the chair. Keep going, okay? You could put the foot like so, which is what I'm doing, or you can put it like this. Your choice. It's not rolling the ankle, so you can find what works for you, and you'll notice my foot is on the chair to give me some stability and platform to press through. You can also drape it if you have more of the leg on the couch or depending on the height, you may want your shin just resting on it. The most important thing is that this knee and hip angle with the ankle joint staying nice and stable for that knee. Breathe. You're almost there, you guys. 15 seconds. Keep those abs tight as you work. Power through that glute as you press up. Good work. Last one. Eh. One more. And release. Good. From here, you already have that foot. Just rotate towards me. And have that foot back. We're going to go into Bulgarians. You want to curl that toe. You want to make sure this front knee is not already over your ankle. Otherwise, when you bend your knee, you're going to have your knee forward of your ankle towards your toes, which is going to put a lot of strain on that knee. So really holding that leg back. Again, what's a modification for this? Simply having a split lunge and having that foot back behind you. So you can absolutely do it this way or putting that leg back. And then also, putting that leg back, for those of you that want added cardio, you can add your jump to this, and you can hop it up. Breathe. Maybe do three hops, three without, three hops, three without, or you just crush it with those hops. Squeezing those glutes as you stand. I promise this whole workout's not legs, okay? I promise. We're just getting those big muscle groups going and breathe and burned out. Whew, shaky, shaky. Good, work that glute, pressing through, nice control. Get ready to switch legs. Now for me, I always have to look back when I switch legs for some reason, I'm never really sure where it is. So find your spot, make sure you're stable, make sure your knee is not over your ankle when you're straight legged, so that when you bend that knee, you have good support. That knee goes straight down through your back knee, your body stays upright, your head over your pelvis is like an elevator. Good. Now, you, no one said you have to go a certain speed. Remember, you can hop to make it harder. You can put that foot back to make it more supportive and more stable. If you have bad toes, you can relax the foot down. You don't have to curl the toes to do this. You can relax the foot down and work through it that way. But you don't want too much of your shin on the chair or on the couch because otherwise the edge hits your shin and prevents you from getting that range of motion. Breathe. Good work. Oh, that burn. Oh, what are we moving into next? What could we possibly move into as we work up those legs? Breathe. 
Good. And release. So now, if you have a chair, you're going to end up having the back of the chair still here, and you're kneeling up on it. If you have a couch, you're kneeling up on the couch, and your other leg is dangling down. Holding onto the couch, chair on the sides. Couch, you might have to go forearms or hands on an armrest or anything like that, so you're supported. And then pull that leg back. Good, work the range that you can go. I don't want you to kick the leg up and swing with the back, okay? So make sure you're connecting through the glute, you're lifting that hip up with control, and more importantly, you're not leaning. So I'm gonna do it from this angle, so you can see as I lift, notice this hip staying pretty over this knee. What we don't want is this, where we let that hip go. We wanna make sure we're engaging our obliques and that leg is directly over our knee as we work. Good job. Breathing into it. Nice control. Oh, I'm getting warm. Hopefully I'm not the only one sweating it out here. Good, okay, so from there, if you're on a chair, you're gonna have one hand on the chair and one hand on the floor, depending on how high your chair is. If you're on a couch or a bench like I am, you're gonna take your form closest to the back you're gonna put it down with your fist pointing forward, and then you're gonna rotate slightly, and then lift the leg out and up to the side. Again, how high are you gonna lift that leg? How high can you lift it with good form and technique without any pain? We don't want any bone grinding. We want glute activation. We don't want any strain in the spine. We definitely don't want your wrist to be hurting. So you should not be putting a lot of weight in your upper body to make this happen. If you're wondering why your moving leg is doing all right, but your kneeling leg feels like it's gonna fall off, you're in the right spot, breathe. Good, nice control, you got this. Woo wee hang in there, lift that leg up. Never gonna look at that couch or chair again the same way, right? You've eaten on it, slept on it, watched movies on it, but here you go. Awesome, and release out. Oh, massage out those glutes, release it out, and let's switch sides. So for those of you that know me well, I work glutes a ton. Here we go, lift it up. Why is it that I work glutes so much? They're one of, besides the abs, the powerhouses in movement. They stabilize our pelvis, they help our low back, they stabilize our knee joint, they're our hip stability. So they're really, really important muscles we walk with them, we run with them, we stand. So we really wanna make sure that we're hitting all three. And the gluteus muscle makes up three. So that is why I'm so specific about where I want you to feel it as well as you move. If you're like, oh my God, Nisha, please stop talking. My hip is burning. I can't believe I'm kneeling on this leg that just worked. That's why I'm talking to you. Distract you a little bit while keeping your form. Watch you not kicking that leg just to get it done. Muscle crea creation, muscle contraction, is going to create your movement. I don't want you to move and hope that you caught it with your muscle. I want you to engage your muscle and lift it up. Good, shake it out, breathe. You got 15 seconds, nice and steady. And then here we go, we're gonna take that forearm down, or if you're on a chair, you're gonna take one hand to the floor possibly. I want you to stay stable and then lift up and down. I just want your chair to you know, rock over on you. If you're on a couch or a bench or an ottoman, you're not gonna have that problem so you can stay where you are. But otherwise, with a chair, I just want you to be careful. Good. And I apologize, you can be here. So you're slightly rotated. You're dropping into that hip to work it. And those, those side glutes, you know what your side glutes are now. Your glute meat and your glute min. You're very aware of where those fibers are. Breathe. I think, I think, I think this is your last um, glute set for a while. Or leg set. Deep breath. Awesome. Only a couple more. You can do it. Breathe through it. Woo! Come on. We got this. That timer's coming. Hasn't forgotten about us. Last one. And relax out. All right. Good job, you guys. So from there, we're going to go into triceps. So if you have a wrist issue and you can't, put weight on it, I'll give you an option. But the rest of you, let's get you started and drop down and back up. 
Or you can go straight legs down and back up with your hands on the couch or chair. If you have a tricep uh, wrist issue, I want you to be right here and pump through those arms. If you want to grab some hand weights, you can, but otherwise a minute of just moving accurately through your tricep, you will start to feel it, okay? So find what works for you and where you want to go with this. For those of you that would like to go single leg, I'll give you a perk with going single leg by going into figure four stretch and stretching out your glute muscle while you do it. Good, after five of them, make sure you switch legs so both glutes are happy. Again, these are options. Harder option with a single leg. You can go straight leg to make it even harder, making sure you're not pushing weight into your wrists, but you're stabilizing through your tricep. Good. Both feet down for the rest of it if you want to, or you can keep switching. Good, last one. And release. From there, we're gonna go to push-ups. I'm gonna go on this other end so you can still see me. Otherwise, you're just gonna flip around and come right here. Again, you're gonna hold the sides of your chair. If you're on the couch, hold the edge of your couch. If you're on a bench, you can go right onto the bench. And then drop down and go to your push-ups. Can you go down to your knees? Yes, absolutely. You're welcome to go down to your knees if you need it. You can choose your tricep push-up, which is elbows close to the waistline. Or you can choose your pec push-up. Elbows are kind of flaring out. Your choice as to what your body needs. Keep your neck in alignment, so I'm gonna stop looking at the camera. Keep your neck in alignment as you work to press. Keep your abs nice and tight so you're not going into your low back as you work. Use your exhale to come up. Good job, you guys. Nice control. I know most of you have your back to me. Don't worry about it. Focus on your push-ups. Focus on your glutes staying tight. Focus on your abs staying engaged as you work. One more. And release it out. Shake out those arms. We're gonna go into plank. Lots of plank options here. So of course the obvious one is plank it out right here. You're ready to go. But I would like to see some of you, if it's appropriate, put your hands or forearms down in front, put your feet up on your bench, and come into your plank here. Deep breath. We're just holding, nice and stable, nice and steady. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna do this way just so I'm in, in screen, but again, you can choose what works for you. Keep your core tight, keep your elbows under your shoulders, or your wrists under your shoulders, keep your glutes engaged, keep your heels pressed back, regardless if it's on the chair or not. I did not mention a wheelie chair. Hopefully none of you are doing this on a wheelie chair. Um, that would not be as safe. So hopefully you guys are doing this on a nice, stable chair. Breathe. Keeping those glutes engaged, pulling your belly button in. And release it out. Fantastic, from there we're gonna go into bridging. So you're gonna go ahead and lay on down and put your feet onto that couch. Shoulders are down and back, and we're gonna bridge up and down. Keeping those glutes tight as we work. Now I just have my heels pushing down to access my glutes and hamstrings a little bit more. Squeeze those glutes. You got it. Abs stay tight as you lift. Remember, it's not about how high you go, it's how engaged you are. Quality over quantity. So make sure it's coming from your butt. Your hamstrings don't take over. They are engaging, but they don't take over the work. Keep your abs in, pulling your belly button into your spine. Fantastic. Hands behind your head and curl and crunch. I started you a little early, but if you're ready to go, go for it. And then the next option, besides crunching, is to rest your legs on the chair or whatever and go into your full sit-ups. Your hand in front of you is gonna be a little supportive, but you can make it really hard with your hands behind you. Good, supporting the weight of your head, but not letting your heels come off your surface. Breathe. Again, crunches are fine. If it's too much in your neck, then focus on your lower abs and just press your abs in with belly breathing. If rolling up is too much on your tailbone, 
You can put a pillow or a towel there, or just go to a crunch or as high as you feel comfortable. Remember, we don't want pain. No pain, no gain does not exist. It's actually very bad for you. But we want to challenge ourselves to the amount that we are actually capable of. All right, hold yourself in position. Roll back slightly, hands in, and rotate and twist right to left. Nice and steady. If you need to do it here, you're going to twist right to left, very close to the floor. Beautiful. And I'm going to go right here. Nice and stable. Focus on the oblique rotation, pulling your belly button deep in your spine, making sure it's not your arms moving you, but it's your abs. And I'll focus on a side view here. This is a little bit tighter, but nice and supported, and focusing on that rotation through the waistline. Beautiful. Keep focusing on that rotation. Now, if that's too much for you still, you're getting into your neck, exhale, and rotate sitting just as I am, or sitting on your chair. And just sit here. That's completely acceptable. Breathe. Focus on that rib cage. Focus on oblique contraction. Good. Whichever one you're choosing, just keep to it, okay? Last one. And release it out. Everyone sitting up as I am. And we're going to go into alternating knee raises. This may seem really easy, but what I want you to do is sit towards the end, lean back a little bit, and then use your abs to pull one leg up and then the other leg up. Now, it's really easy to just march. Nuts in your hip flexors. You're going to hate me if you do it that way. But just a slight lean back and then contract. Exhale. So you're pulling your lower abs in, and it's causing your pelvis to curve under as it takes the femur bone up with it. So it's almost like your femur bone in your hip socket is not actually changing in its relationship. Does that make sense? When the femur bone goes into the hip, we're not changing that angle from the femur bone in the hip. We're taking that, all of that with the weight of the leg being a resistance, and we're contracting your abs. Focus on the belly button. Now, I'm not leaning back too far. So if you have a backrest here, you're not leaning into it. You're not touching it. You're keeping your abs nice and tight, and you're focusing on that contraction. Beautiful. Okay, so you can stick with that version, or you can add rotation, or if you can, you're gonna go both legs and contracting through. So again, this is the exercise with both legs. I want your upper body to curl forward as well. I'll do it from a side view again. You're holding the sides of your chair or the front of your couch as you do it. You don't have to. If you don't need it, and focus on those lower abs. Again, you could do a rotation. If that's too much in your hip flexors, you're losing the obliques. The hip flexors, the psoas, tends to activate. Keep going, okay, guys? But tends to activate if your obliques are either not functioning the way they should or they're fatiguing real fast. And it calls on the hip flexors to assist and aid. If you're feeling your hip flexors, you need to go smaller in your motion or you need to take it down in intensity so that you can actually activate your core, burn out fat, without depending on a muscle that's not supposed to do the work. Breathe, breathe, good, and relax. Okay, so this is a two part, especially if you have a wrist injury, you're not gonna wanna do it this way. So I'm gonna show it first, it's a hover. So you're gonna go towards the edge, you're gonna scoop your abs, and then pull up, and you're gonna hold, and just hold, and hold, and hold. Now, if you're like, there's no way, it's not happening. Well, first of all, you can give it a shot. If you're on a couch, it's a little harder. So in that case, lay down on your couch or on the floor, put your hands against your knees, and press. And really press. You can have your head down, and you're pulling your knees into your chest against resistance of your upper body, and you're holding that contraction. For those of you hovering, sit down, breathe. Take a breather for a second. Roll out those wrists. And we're going to go for one more. So either that one or the hover. Here we go. Keep those abs contracted. No swinging. Don't pitch forward. Keep those abs tight. Work that contraction. Breathe. Nice and steady. And release it down and breathe. Whew. Good job. So we're going to go from there into our plank again. So I'm going to go forearms facing you. You can absolutely go hands or forearms on the floor with feet on the chair. And we're going to go into a cross mountain climber. So what a cross mountain climber looks like, you're going to take your right knee to your left elbow, 
left knee to the right elbow. And you're gonna alternate right to left. So here we go, let's get started. So you can be here, you put your hands up on it to make it higher and make it a little easier, less of a challenge depending on what you need. Or you can decline and go here and twist through. Breathe. There's no right or wrong. There's just safe, effective challenge to the body. Breathe. Find that internal rotation on that hip as you work. You got this, you guys. Keep it going. Nice and steady. Can you do it here? You're starting to feel tired in your shoulders? Absolutely. Focusing on the obliques. Again, muscle creates your movement. So however you do it, just pay attention to working the correct muscle. And in here, we want obliques and stability of the shoulders. Breathe. Almost there. And release. Woohoo! Good job, you guys. Take a seat. Breathe. As you take a seat, get your breath back. Go and take your hand, your left hand to the outside of your right knee. Rotate and twist. I feel a nice stretch to the right. Breathe. Try to get your heart rate back down slowly, taking deep breaths. And switch. Rotate through. Press against that leg, keeping your abs tight. Shoulders are down away from the ears. Nice, steady. Breathing into it. Coming back to center, put your hand on the side of the couch or the chair. Take it up and over. Big stretch. Now we did 16 exercises. Well, actually 18 exercises on the, on the sofa, on the chair. And there are many, many more. So there are fun ways that you can incorporate exercise in your work environment, on your couch, while you're at home, lots of options. And bring it back up, let's do it again, take it over. And then this time you're gonna rotate down at an angle, feel like someone pulled your wrist to that side. So you feel stretched down the left side of your low back. And bring it back up. And switch over first, and then reaching through. Nice and long. Breathe. And release it out. Beautiful, take your leg, cross it over. If this is not appropriate for you for a figure four stretch, as you go over, I'm gonna give you another option. Another option is to cross at your knees and then fold forward here and just take your hand to your ankle and pull it across. That's another way of keeping the hips stable if you need it. Of course, you can lay down on the floor or on your couch or anything else and do the full pretzel. But again, make sure you do have a hip replacement or anything like that. Make sure you're stable in that hip and avoid that figure four um, unless your hip replacement's um, more recent and not of acute concern. Good switch. Again, pretzel is an option. The hip stays pretty stable. You hit figure four is okay if you're not under any contraindications or seated in that figure four and coming forward. Releasing yourself up, take your feet wide, hang your body down, breathe, and then stretch up through your spine and then scoot through the back. I'm gonna do it from a side view. So you're here, stretch up through your spine and scoop to your back. And stretch up to your spine and scoop to your back. Like a cat cow, seated, nice and steady. And then rolling it up. Roll your shoulders up, back and around. And reverse that circle. Inhale those arms up, big stretch. And exhale. One more time, big stretch. I wanna thank all of you for joining me on this workout with your couch, from a couch potato workout to a real sweat job.